My name is Ann Wright. I'm a U.S. Uh, citizen. I'm a, a retired U.S. Army colonel and a former U.S. diplomat who resigned eight years ago in opposition to the war in Iraq. In my many years with the U.S. government, I never agreed with every single policy of the U.S. government. Most government employees don't, but it was the war in Iraq, the invasion and occupation of an oil-rich Arab Muslim country that did not attack the United States and had nothing to do with 9-11, and I didn't believe had weapons of mass destruction, so I resigned. I was not about to be a part of that. And then, now that I've been out of the government, uh, the issues of what's happening to the Palestinians have come uh, to be a very uh, key part of my uh, activist work, that I spend a lot of time now trying to get my government, the U.S. government, that uh, that protects Israel on all of its criminal acts, uh, to try to get my government to change, to acknowledge that Israel, if you really are a friend of Israel, you cannot uh, give them the protection to do all these criminal things, to include the the blockade of Gaza, the collective punishment of the people of Gaza, the attack on Gaza two years ago that killed 1,440 people, wounded 5,000, left 50,000 homeless. You can't cut off the West Bank, the apartheid walls, the illegal settlements of the West Bank. I mean, this is purely blatantly wrong. And our government, my government, the U.S. government, protects it because of the monetary contributions made by the Zionist lobbies, the Israeli lobbies, to politicians in the U.S. That's the only reason they get these votes. The protection of the state of Israel, if you really are, are concerned about the survival of the state of Israel, then you'd better get Israel to stop doing what it's doing in the world, which is blowing apart people who, who are not uh, in any way saying that the state of Israel should not exist. I mean, that's decades ago. Uh, but the, the Israeli lobby continues to push hard on this victim uh, image for it that everybody's out to get us. Well, the people that are out to get them are the ones that, are, if you want to have little justice for criminal acts committed against you, that's that's where it's all at. So I I work with groups, uh, the Gaza Flotilla, uh, the U.S. Boat to Gaza. I work on boycotts, divestment, and sanctions. I helped organize the Gaza Freedom March last year that took 1,350 people into Cairo, hoping to be able to go into Gaza in solidarity with the people of Gaza. Um, I work on a lot of other issues too, but uh, the Palestinian issue is the uh, is symbolic of so so much of American policies that are, are are wrong. And as you see, what's going on in the Middle East right now with all of the governments that the U.S. has been protecting and been protecting the dictatorship of Mubarak in, in Egypt, uh, who. who uh, has established diplomatic relations with Gaddafi after all that he's he's done uh, protecting all of the dictators of the Gulf states and now that the people of, of those regions are saying wait a minute we we finally have gotten the courage to stand up to those dictators and the United States government is kind of going uh oh we're in trouble well they should be in trouble because supporting those dictators has been Terrible. And there's a good reason why many people in the world hate the United States, and it's because of the policies of the United States in protecting all these people that are committing uh, human rights violations and, and actually war crimes. Actually, the U.S. didn't necessarily support the regime of Gaddafi. In fact, there was a lot of clashing with Gaddafi. Uh, the U.S. attacked Gaddafi, actually, in, in the 1980s. And then Gaddafi, you know, after the blow-up of... Uh, well, a blow-up of a Pan American airliner, the assassination of American soldiers in Berlin. I mean, there's there's been a lot of back and forth. I would say the United States needs to be very careful in in any sort of use of its own troops in that region. Uh, I think the people. I, I I hate what Gaddafi is doing to the people of Libya. However, it is a struggle for Libyans. It's not a struggle for the United States. And you can see that 
that the, I mean, we should not be verbally supporting Qaddafi. We should, we should, in my opinion, certainly say that the people have the right to revolt against dictatorships. But they are the ones that have to do this. And if the United States gets involved, it undercuts the legitimacy of the of the uh, opposition forces to Qaddafi. It gives Qaddafi uh, yet one more tool that he can use, saying, look at this foreign influence, look at all this. And America is hated in the Middle Eastern region. And for it to think that it can help anyone by intervening is wrong. There may be other nations whose military assistance um, I think would probably be much better received by the region, but the United States, we need to keep our nose out of that. Uh, you know, the Marine Corps, the U.S. Marine Corps song starts out from the halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli. The United States has been intervening in so many things. We have over 1,000 U.S. bases around the world. We do not need to be the ones that are intervening in Libya. Uh, if the Libyans want military help from other places, I hope they, they make their request to somebody, but I hope the United States does not get involved. Morally, the people of America are with the opponents of Qaddafi, um, but the U.S. government's uh, will, its presence will screw it up so badly for the good people who are trying to overthrow Qaddafi that uh, I, I hope the U.S. does not send any military weapons there. I was on the Challenger 1 in the first flotilla. Uh, the Challenger was uh, attacked by the Israeli military. All six ships were attacked. Uh, people were uh, hit in the face with paint bullets. Uh, there were stun guns that were used blowing people across the, the ship. Uh, the windows were blown out, doors blown out by percussion grenades. Uh, people were hit. Um, um, we fortunately had no one that was killed on board our boat, but it was a, a very uh, brutal attack, as all of these attacks are. I was in the U.S. military myself, and I know what can happen when military, young military men are given the order to take control of a house, of a, of a ship, whatever it is. They have their tactics and techniques, and they are rough and brutal. Uh, the Israeli government is at fault. They did, if they wanted to stop the convoy, they could do it without boarding the ships. They could do it without killing people. They chose to use extreme force and, and death. Uh, and that's where they should be held accountable. Because there were ways to stop those ships if that's all they wanted to do. But they, that's not what they wanted. They wanted to show the world. They wanted to show the Palestinians. We'll treat everybody like we treat you. And we'll get away with it. And our job is to make sure they don't get away with it and take them to the International Criminal Court. Take them to the justice courts to say, you are wrong and you need to be held accountable for this. We, what happened to us is a small version of what happens to Palestinians every single day. Every day there are Palestinians that are murdered by Israeli soldiers and nobody says anything. The reason we're going again is because international people get attention. Palestinians don't. So we are in, in standing in the place for Palestinians, for their human rights, to say that, that you, violate our, you violate Palestinian human rights, you violate our human rights. And if it takes us being standing up as internationals to get the world to focus on really what's happening in, in Gaza or the West Bank, then we intend to do it. Uh,